Thank you for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe and like for more videos. Hi everyone. Today we will look at condenser fundamentals. We will look at how condenser operate and formulas to use when answering condenser questions. So what is a condenser role in a steam plant? Condensers play an important role by increasing the performance of the overall plant. The function of a condenser just to mention just a few important is to convert steam to condensate or to liquid water at the same temperature. It also creates a vacuum and saves water. Take note. The condenser must maintain a vacuum condition. When we say a condenser must maintain a vacuum condition, it means that the inside of the condenser should be almost completely empty, without any air or other gases. In a condenser, having a vacuum means removing all the air and other gases from the inside, creating a space where there's nothing or almost nothing at all. This vacuum condition is important for the condenser because it allows it to work more efficiently. Okay. We have two types of condenser that we will talk about here. One is the surface condenser. And two is spray condenser. Now let's look at how each operate and how the formulas differs. Here's a simplified explanation of how a surface condenser works. 1. Steam enters the condenser at high pressure from a power plant turbine and enters the condenser. This steam contains heat energy that needs to be removed. 2. Cooling water flows over tubes. The condenser has a network of tubes through which cooling water flows through them. We have inlet cooling water at low temperature T3 and outlet cooling water T4. As the steam comes into contact with the cool surface of the tubes, heat is transferred from the steam to the cooling water through the tube walls. This causes the steam to lose its heat energy and start to condense or in other words, it start to turn into liquid water. 4. Condensate Collection now the water, known as condensate, drips down from the tubes and get collected in a pan or a hot well at the bottom of the condenser. 5. Removal of non-condensable gases. As the steam condenses, some non-condensable gases may be present. These gases, such as air, need to be removed from the condenser to maintain the vacuum condition. Vacuum pumps or other devices are used to extract these gases and maintain the desired vacuum level. We will talk about this later in details using the Dalton's law regarding partial pressure theory. 6. Liquid water exit. Finally the liquid water collected in the hot well is then pumped out of the condenser and used for various purposes such as feeding it back into the boiler to be converted back into steam and cycle repeat again and again. Now we know how surface condensers operate. So let's look at the formula, how to calculate the mass of cooling water. We have two approaches to consider here. The first approach. Heat balance equation, where the heat emitted by the steam is equal to the heat absorbed by the water. which is written as ms open bracket h1 plus hc close bracket equals to mw cpw open bracket t4 minus t3 close bracket in this equation ms represents the mass of the steam also measured in kilograms kg h1 is heat enthalpy of steam, which is usually the wet steam coming in from the turbine. H1 is also equals to Q times HFG. Q is dryness fraction and HFG is latent heat or what we refer to as enthalpy of evaporation. HC is heat enthalpy of the condensate, which is equals to 
CPW, brackets, TS minus, TC, where CP is specific heat capacity of water at 4,187 kilojoules per kilograms Kelvin. CPW is always this value, never changes. TS is temperature of the steam taken from the steam table against the steam pressure. And TC is the temperature of the condensate, which is also equals to air temperature TA, more about TA later. After the equal sign, we have the cooling water heat. MW is mass of cooling water. CPW is specific heat capacity of water at 4,187 kilojoules per kilograms Kelvin. T4 is outlet temperature of cooling water, and T3 is the inlet cooling water. Note. The equation here will be applicable when answering surface condenser question. To answer questions about spray condenser, you need note the following. Since the condensate mixes with cooling water and gets collected as one liquid, we will not have heat enthalpy of the condensate HC, in other words. We will to take HC as zero. Also, we won't be able to measure the outlet cooling water T4, same reason as previous. But the difference in cooling temperature will be given as the raise in temperate. Change in T with the two taken into consideration. Now let's look at a spray condenser, which is also known as an evaporative condenser or a cooling tower. It's just a heat exchanger used to condense steam by utilizing the principle of evaporation. So here's a simplified explanation of how a spray condenser operates. One steam enters the condenser at high pressure steam, typically from a power plant turbine from the bottom of condenser. Two, the condenser has nozzles that distribute cooling water over a large surface area within the condenser from the top of the condenser by spray or water splash over the plates resulting in water spraying all over. Three, then the steam comes into contact with the water sprayed. Heat is then transferred from the steam to the water, causing some of the water to evaporate. This transfer of heat and the subsequent evaporation process cool down the steam and cause it to condense into liquid water. Four, the condensed water, along with any remaining water from the spray, collects in a basin or sump at the bottom of the condenser. 5. Similar to a surface condenser, any non-condensable gases present in the steam, such as air or carbon dioxide, need to be removed from the condenser. This is done to maintain the desired vacuum or pressure level within the system. More about that later. 6. Finally. The collected water is typically recirculated back to the spray nozzles for reuse. Makeup water is added as needed to compensate for any losses due to evaporation or other factors. Heat balance equation, where the heat emitted by the steam is equal to the heat absorbed by the water. Since the condensate mixes with cooling water. We won't be able to measure the condensate temperature Tc, and subsequently Hc will be 0. Ms times H1 equals to Mw Cpw times the raise in temperature. In a spray condenser, we have inlet cooling water T3 but we don't have T4 outlet. Since water and condensate mix, instead we have what we refer to as the condensate mixture T4 or it will be given as the rise in temperature. Change in T. Use this formula when answering a spray condenser questions. H1. Is heat enthalpy of steam, which is usually the wet steam coming in from the turbine. So here are the formulas you use for each condenser in applying the first approach formula. Okay, now to the second approach. 
I recommend that you only use this formula or approach when you are asked to calculate the quality of steam entering the condenser queue if you see a question that asks to calculate the dryness fraction. Use this one. Or write the formula is as follows. MS, open bracket, HF, plus Q, times. HFG to minus, HC, close bracket. Equals to, MW, CPW, open bracket, T4, minus, T3, close bracket. The only new information here is HF, which represent the water enthalpy taken from steam table against the condenser pressure. In closing, we have two types of condensers that we discussed. Surface and spray condensers. We discussed how each condenser operates so that we can use the first approach to have a formula for each condenser. And we also talked about the second approach which I recommend to only use when you're asked to calculate the dryness fraction Q. Dalton's law regarding partial pressure. Remember earlier we talked about a condenser having to maintain a vacuum, well let's look at that in details. So during condensation in a condenser, some gases may be present inside. These gases, such as air, need to be removed from the condenser to maintain the vacuum condition. To achieve this, vacuum pumps are used to extract these gases and maintain the desired vacuum level. So we apply Dalton's law regarding partial pressure. The law states that the pressure exerted by mixture of gases or vapor is equals to the sum of the individual pressures of each gas. It can be written as an equation which says absolute condenser pressure P equals to the steam pressure PS plus partial pressure of APA. P is absolute condenser pressure. PS is partial pressure of steam or vapor. PA is partial pressure of air. Absolute condenser pressure peak can be calculated by the formula P equals to barometer reading minus manometer reading or multiply by 101,325 kilopascal divided by 760. Pressure of the steam PS you find this value from the steam table at a condensate temperature TC. For partial pressure of APA, since it's A here, we use the perfect gas formula that says PAVA equals to MRTA. VA is the air capacity. Partial pressure can be calculated using the previous mentioned Dalton's law. The mass M is multiplied by a leakage. Of your given air leakage then you calculate the new mass of air. It will be MA time air leakage divided by the rate. Take gas constant R as 0, 0.287 unless given at different value. Condensate temperature Tc is the same as the temperature of ATA, but Ta must be in Kelvin, so add by 273. Well that's all the fundamentals you need to know so that you can be able to answer any condenser formula. Also, I recommend you check the other two condenser questions videos. Click the link above. Thank you for watching. If you're new here,
Please subscribe and like for more videos.